Gaming. Hello and welcome to the Daily Flange with Intoxicus Gaming. Today is February 11th, 2020, and we have an anthem topic for you today. It's been announced by Bioware and EA that they intend to do some sort of remake flange for Anthem and try and rescue it like been, has been done with No Man's Sky and Destiny 2 and other games. Um, and unfortunately, a lot of people have been shitting on Anthem because of this and using this as another excuse to join the shit on Anthem bandwagon and ignore Anthem's potential. Uh, personally, as I'm sure you can tell, I'm a bit frustrated by this because Anthem has a shit ton of potential. Um, they definitely made a lot of mistakes. It definitely had a ridiculous launch that could have been a lot better. Um, but they've been fixing things. A lot has been fixed, um, and they have been putting work and effort into it, but people refuse to even look at it because it's a big fad to poop on Anthem right now. So... Yeah, I'd say get off that bandwagon, there, play the game, be objective, and don't just poop on it because everyone else is. Um, I bet a lot of these people pooping on it haven't even played it since the admittedly very terrible launch. A lot has changed since then. A lot that should change hasn't changed yet, but enough has changed. It's worth giving Anthem a second look if you thought it wasn't very good when it launched. Like, the story was solid. Nothing revolutionary or groundbreaking, but solid. Um, there, there's a lot of world building and lore that's very good. Graphically, it looks great. Performance has been improved to be quite acceptable. Excuse me, quite acceptable. And um, some of the reasons people are mad at Anthem has more to do with how they failed to market it and failed to set people's expectations. So. Before we get into some history on context on how this all got to this point, uh, we'll touch on the Ice Tide event. People have recently been like, oh, the Christmas decorations are still up. They're ignoring their game and not doing anything. If you get into the lore of the Ice Tide event, it makes sense. Like, it's the whole Shaper Storms and how that works. It's a unpredictable event where they even get ice and snow it happens just because the shaper craziness that just changes all of reality which is really cool lore wise like they got a lot to work with there so this ice tide thing just kind of happens they can't predict it they don't know when it'll happen but because it's so rare it's just like a big christmas like but not christmas holiday so to assume that this ice tide event lore wise within the game is so much like christmas that they take their decorations down at like Christmas is flawed and maybe the mistake is making the ice tide look too much like Christmas that people are heaping Christmas type expectations on it but then that leads back into this thought that really the problem with people pooping on Anthem has a lot to do with expectations and how they were built up and then when you get to a point where people are like oh Anthem's a game to poop on if I want to be all hip and in with it People will just poop on it without even actually objectively looking at it. But if you objectively look at, or sorry, if you take an objective look at the Ice Tide event and the lore behind it, it absolutely makes sense for the uh, quote unquote Christmas decorations, which are not Christmas decorations, they just look like it because it's a familiar archetype. Like, Ice Tide is not Christmas. Don't expect it to be like Christmas. It makes sense. And there's in game events. That if they take out, there's just nothing. They can't just remove Ice Tide without replacing it with the next thing. Which is probably going to be somewhat Easter focused, I would imagine. Because that's the next big religious kind of holiday. And, you know, they did Halloween. They did Christmas. Makes sense. They'll do Easter. But they can't just... Like, they kind of made that mistake with the previous... Um, a big world event kind of thing where they kind of half removed it and then they just kind of left people without like anything really to do so they have to leave it up so people have things to do in the game because that's the other big problem is the um end game that that's there's not really that much of an end game it, it doesn't take long to hit that eternal power creep kind of thing going on 
So that kind of mini rant aside, and it's all this stuff, I want to go properly deep into it with an extra flange, but just because this has just come up like it is, and um, I, you can tell uh, it, it's it's a thing that bothers me in general when people get on these bandwagons and they don't even look at the thing for themselves. They're just repeating everyone else's opinions. So um, I implore you all, form your own opinion. Stop repeating other people's opinions. Play the game yourself. Put the previous history out of your mind as best you can because as we're looking at this article and it's all Kotaku articles I I have mixed feelings about them not the biggest fan of them but they, they've got the best articles so we're going to use them as a source um, they, they have this very long really good article about how Anthem had a, such a poopy launch how it failed what the issues were the kind of behind the scenes issues the management issues which are Definitely the main primary problem is management. I, I try to avoid this, but I will single out Ben Irving. It's actually, when I found out he had a history of ruining the uh, Kodar game, I think it was the online one, uh, it escapes my memory which one, but he effectively ruined a Kodar game with a bad loot system. And then I'm playing Anthem, I find out about that, I'm like, oh, Ben Irving doesn't have a fucking clue how to do loot in games. He doesn't. He thinks casino odds are fun. Casino odds are not fun in a game because that's exactly Anthem's loot problem is to get anything worthwhile, it's goddamn casino odds. Um, so, and that has been fixed. You do get items better, but there's still a problem. Like I was trying to get some gameplay capture, but run into some ran into some technical issues. And I ran into a situation where uh, just about top tier or very high tier, kind of legendary-ish enemy, you know, an enemy you expect good loot from because they're rare and difficult, gave me the lowest tier item that could possibly drop at the highest difficulty. Then a basic common enemy immediately right after dropped the highest tier possible item they could drop. Like, that should have been backwards. So that, that gives you a good idea of the problems with the loot system, which are very fixable problems. So, we're, I mean, I'm just scrolling through the article just to show it to you guys. We're not going to go into it. We don't have time for that. It's a very long article. If you haven't read it, read it. Please read it. They did a follow-up article that's pretty good. goes more into what they fixed and some of the issues. So, this one's a personal one. There's a patch on March 26th, which happens to be my birthday. That patch was just... Ooh. It was one of their worst patches. It broke the game more. And that's the thing. Like, I understand. There there are serious problems with Anthem. Some of them have been fixed. Some of them didn't. Some of... there. It's a very mixed bag. But when it comes to the question of, is Anthem worth a reboot? Is it worth trying to fix? Is it worth rescuing? Absolutely. There's so much potential here. The lore, this world building, the visuals, the gameplay loop itself it is so much fun to fly around in these paddle power sorry paddle power battle armor suits that are like something out of it's like a cross between starship troopers and um iron man like it's amazing it's something i've always wanted so I'll, I'll fully admit maybe i've got some personal bias that what anthem offers i've wanted for a long time if you've ever played the game terra nova old game back on dos doesn't no one seems to remember it excellent game first game I'm aware of to really bring powered battle armor as a concept into gaming and since that game I've wanted something like Anthem and now now we've got Anthem but they fucked it up pretty bad but is it irredeemable absolutely not it's definitely redeemable and I, I believe I can be objective enough. Oh, I'll turn the volume down on that. So this is the original E3 cinematic trailer, I believe. Um, so, like, uh, I lost my train of thought. I, I need to work on that. Um, so forget my train of thought I just lost. Let's go on to um, kind of more how we got here. Like, so this trailer is a good example. This trailer... I think they meant to, to be more this is what we the direction we want to go and they didn't mean it to be affirmed this is what you're actually going to get and if that was their intent in the case they made a massive mistake by not being clear about that but does that make Anthem irredeemable absolutely not 
like it, it boggles me how people can't see the redeeming merits in this game. It's got so much potential. They can still get to this. They can still give us something very close to what we thought we were going to get when we watched this trailer. So I get it. The the broken promises or the feeling of broken promises and the expectations they didn't realize they set up that they didn't fulfill. That's a serious problem, but we're not having that discussion. And I think that's actually, now that I say it out loud, is really what bothers me about this all oh, let's shit on Anthem bandwagon. Is because there's a bigger discussion we could be having about how companies make mistakes setting up expectations, but also how we make mistakes setting up our own expectations when we should... Um, I'm not sure how to phrase it, but... We, we need to not get so attached and hung up on our own expectations. And I, I know, easier said than done. And I'm this doesn't saying that does not take away from the mistakes they've made. I, I that is not my intent. So, like, I mean, just the ice tide season thing is a seasonal event. They're, like, they're trying. They're really trying here now that they've got... And that's the thing. They got rid of Ben Irving and the bad management. And uh, just it, that was also very frustrating. Because when that story broke that Ben Irving and the bad management were leaving, people were like, oh, the game's doomed now. I'm like, what are you guys talking about? They got rid of the problem. Now the game has a hope because the people that were holding it back are gone. Like, Ben Irving specifically, and I'm, I'm sorry to single him out so much, but it's the whole Kodar thing and being like, oh, he he's the reason that game went bad, because he screwed up the loot system. It's like, he didn't learn from that. He hasn't learned from Diablo 3's mistakes and other games' mistakes while chanting, we want to be like Diablo 3. So it's like, I, I don't got much good to say about Ben Irving. I don't think he should manage any video game project ever again, especially one to have to do with loot. I'm sorry to be so harsh, but... I'm sure he's a great guy personally. I'm sure he's not a bad person. I, I think he's just not a good manager. I, I think he's I think he has an ego problem. And I don't want to get too far off on that tangent, but he doesn't seem to be able to get past himself to see he doesn't know like Dunning Kruger type stuff. He doesn't know enough to know how bad he is at loot. And he won't listen to anyone to actually understand how bad he is at doing this. Just starting at Casino level odds in a loot game. Pfft, bad idea. I mean, I, I, I got banned from the Blizzard forums for this half trolling. We can't all have Ferraris post when post post. I meant to say post. Um, that I made because I was getting frustrated with people being like, but everyone should have the best loot. It's like, well, then the best loot's meaningless. So, I mean, there's a balance to be had. We you, Not everyone can have the very best god rolls. But we all got a, you know, we might not all get a Ferrari, but we should all be able to get at least a, you know, a good quality Tesla, if, if you get where I'm going with the metaphor. Or, or you know what, I, I, I think you understand where I'm going with that example, and if I can move on, um, or metaphor, I should say. So, you know, I, I hope it's not coming through too much, but, like, the, this really frustrates me that Anthem's not getting the credit it deserves where it has done things right and where it has done things well. But as much as I say this, I will absolutely talk about how Anthem screwed up, how they never should have made that claim about low times because that was just goddamn dumb of them to be making such a claim. I, I bet you I'll, I'll put a lot of money if they had not made that claim about low times there would have been a lot less hate for Anthem because that claim was just egregious. Whoever decided to say that about low times in Anthem, ooh, just that person sh should be banned from making such statements ever again because, like, even with the PlayStation 5 making some pretty intense claims about low times on their, you know, supposedly special SSD, I'm like, okay, PlayStation, I'll believe that when I see it because I'm running on a high-quality NVMe and I ain't getting that. It's got to be something really special and I ain't seeing it. So, anyways, point is, PlayStation 5, Sony is making some crazy claims about load times in their hard drives, which I don't think they're going to live up to either, and I think it's one of those marketing things where they want to be like, oh, no load times, this is why you want to get it, because no load times is like, oh, guys, slow down, be honest, don't, don't 
go to hyperbole on these claims because it will bite you in the ass. Anyways, I got stuck on that one, but other problems with Anthem. Here, um, it, um, loot. Enemy difficulty. They sorted that out. Loot's improved, but has a long ways to go. Um, I could go on about the loot problems. I, I have, in my mind, a full map how to fix loot for Anthem. Like, it, I wish they would take someone like me seriously. Neat. Jesus. Start over. I wish they would take someone like me seriously enough to actually give my ideas a chance. Because, like... Uh, I, I know that sounds ridiculous of me to say too. So just just if you're like, oh come on, who the hell are you? It's like I, I it sounds ridiculous coming out of my own mouth. So just I, I understand. It's, but the point I'm trying to get at is there's people that can help them and have ideas and want to help them, and they oops sorry about the audio. Um, and they could get this help. For free. I, I will just tell them my ideas for free because I want this game to succeed. I don't care if I get paid. I just want Anthem to be a good game. And and they don't like they don't seem to want to listen. Like they Yeah. But I don't blame them too. Like it's uh it's I, I feel I'm getting a little bit ridiculous there. So if you're like, Graham, you're being a bit silly, it's like I actually yeah, I know I am. I should simmer down a bit. But the, the, you know, I, I I do have to. Uh, I'm I'm tripping over my own thoughts. Please forgive me. Um, it, it's yeah. Um, hmm. So I guess the best way to put it is that yeah, pretty much what I've been saying already. Anthem, as it exists now, has a lot of flaws. It has a lot of problems. They fixed some of those problems, but far from all of those. But they fixed it enough. It is a much more playable game than you experienced when you first started it up when you first got it although i will know i'm playing on pc not on console i can't really comment on the console experience but you know I'm, I'm kind of one of those pc master race kind of guys where i'm like if i can play this game on pc i'm playing it on pc but on the same hand like like that's the thing as much as it frustrates me that people are so ready to poop on Anthem and be like, Anthem's failure, don't want it, well, I just shouldn't say don't want it to succeed, but I don't believe it's going to succeed. Anthem failure, move on to something else that I'm familiar with and I think is better because I'm familiar with it. So I don't mean to be too poopy on anyone, but it's like, it, it's, it, it frustrates me because... There's so much potential, but then we're watching this, and it's like there's so much good stuff in this that just didn't make it to the final game. And it's like, you know, if they show us stuff that's not that ready, it, there needs to be a big caveat label, like early test footage, don't expect this to be in the final thing. They didn't really prep us like that. So they're showing us this stuff, and like, oh, where is that? Like, where's this animation sequence? Like, okay, yeah, so, you know, all the stuff that they showed us early on that just didn't make it, that's a huge part of the problem. That's actually probably one of the biggest problems. If they hadn't unintentionally, I don't think they intended to do this, if they hadn't unintentionally set our expectations so high, I don't think it would be as much of a problem. If they hadn't made egregious claims like the one with the low time, I don't think it'd be as much of a problem. If they had been more upfront and honest and actually transparent about what was going on behind the scenes, I don't think it would have been as much of a problem. And to touch on it, I think it was Ben Irving who made this comment. He made some comment about, oh, that's transparency. Is like, actually, no, no, Mr. Irving, that is not transparency. If you think that's transparency, you need to check yourself because that's not transparency. Transparency is while the game's being made, when there's significant changes that contradict what was shown in a trailer preview like this, you make a post on social media and be like, we can't make this feature work. We're sorry, but we just can't make it work for the final release. We'll try and get it into some DLC or whatever. And, you know, they... I think a lot of the problem actually comes down to PR and marketing and management. And I think if 
we hadn't if we had had better management it would have been a better success or and just a better game at launch and you know i reinstalled it i you know i've been playing other games um and like you know it's got problems with the ice tide event even like i jumped into the ice tide event and it didn't clearly explain the world event stuff so i wound up running into like a free play world event i didn't even know existed so that's the thing as much as they have added a lot and have fixed a lot they still got a lot of problems and I, to try and end on something positive i, I want to talk a little bit more about what anthem does well what does anthem do well gameplay the base gameplay loop is very good just running around flying fighting shooting all that feels great for the most part um visuals look great performance has been fixed up so at 1440p max settings with no anti-aliasing i'm getting mostly a good over 60 frames per second up to the 80s like you know it's there's a lot going on. Like, you can't blame them for not having the best frame rate at 1440. If I was at 1080, it'd be a very solid frame rate for sure. And turning anti-aliasing on at 1080. But I got a 1440 monitor, got a bit lucky there, and uh, I ain't going back. I gotta say, once you go up to 1440p, it is going to be hard to go back to 1080. I, yeah. Anyway, um, more positives. The lore, the world building, excellent. Like definitely some flawed aspects to it but the lore and the world building i love like i need to read more of the lore but it's like it, it's something that i found very engaging about the game there's a lot of depth to it there's a lot of potential where they can take stories like you know there's there's a, so much potential story and lore wise and the story not so much a positive note as the other ones the story is solid uh, some of the side quests and side stories are actually more solid than the main story. And I think this is where another expectation thing comes into play because of Bioware's previous offerings, people are expecting like Mass Effect level storytelling. I don't think they ever intended that with this game. I, Especially with it being more an online multiplayer focused, um, I don't think they ever intended to have that level of storytelling and i don't think we ever should have expected that level of storytelling i know i didn't because i wasn't expecting this game to have that kind of a story because it's not that kind of game so you know if if you get over expecting a mass effect or other bioware game level storytelling it's it's a very solid very engaging story i quite enjoyed it for the most part i definitely like to play through it again and start over but they made that a little bit tricky unfortunately um and yeah like it's just i see my hope and prediction oh excuse me is that when they do their little reboot flange it's oh excuse me going to be a lot closer to what we're watching now in the early trailer in all sorts of ways i think if they were smart and they have good management they will go back to these trailers and be like we need to make this happen and we need to make this work and we need to fix the loot system because that's one of the things with this kind of a loot game if the loot system sucks the game's going to have a tough time like until you get into the like late game end game difficulty levels the loot's fine and then when you're like oh i need upgrades so i can make you know make my late game end game progression happen that gets frustrating um you're definitely dropping more loot than they used to i can tell right away but you know there's other problems with the loot like too many repetitive and redundant affixes um, that need to be combined and sorted out and the whole casino level odds thing and like you know I, I could go on for a long time breaking down what's good and bad and needs to be fixed about anthem i i really want this game to succeed and if you're like oh graham you're biased i don't know if you're being objective yeah i i, I might have a problem with objectivity here i'll fully admit that but i i implore you to reinstall anthem if you've already purchased it purchased it if you haven't purchased it uh, you're probably not going to be into it enough for it to be worth your money to be honest until until they reboot it then i'd say give it a look but if you've already paid for it reinstall it 
give it a second chance. Try the Ice Tide event. Then come back and tell me if you think it's a waste of time. Because they've changed and altered a lot to where it's a much more playable and serviceable game than it was at launch. So that's that's what I'll close on is a lot of people probably have launch anthem in their minds and we're not at launch anthem. We're on our way to the reboot. Like they're working towards that already. Ice Tide is not something they forgot about. It's something they can't turn off until they have the next seasonal event. Otherwise, we've got nothing to do. So, I mean, it, it's it's kind of a different mistake than people realize in a sense. But, again, I, I should save going too deep into this for the extra flange I'm planning. Uh, one of these days I'll stay under 20 minutes on, the, on a daily flange, but it's definitely not today. Um, so, as always, if you like the video, hit the thumbs up. If you didn't, hit the thumbs down. But if you hit the thumbs down, please jump in the comments. Let me know what I can do to turn that thumbs down around into a thumbs up. Um, I'm looking for feedback and how to improve. Um, so, please flange that up. If you want to just chat about Anthem, do you think it's going to fail? Do you think it's going to succeed? Do you think the reboots worth the time do you think it's a sunk cost fallacy to even bother with anthem you know I, I totally want to have that discussion and especially if i can change the minds of some people that um aren't so enthused about anthem that that would be really cool for me personally so um please jump in the comments especially if you think anthem's not worth the time because i i really want to have that discussion in a respectful manner um I'm having a lot of personal issues. The live stream isn't going to happen tonight. I'm very sorry. Um, I'll do my best to re resume on Thursday. Um, it's uh, I struggled enough to get this video out today for the Daily Flange. Um, so bear with me. Um, and so no live stream tonight. Um, my apologies. I just I I barely was able to get this video together. Um, so I do intend to resume the live streams on Thursday, uh, Warcraft 3 again, unless something gives me a better idea, but I just want to switch it up, kind of switch between Heretic and Warcraft 3 until I finish both. Um, and yeah, uh, last thing, if you haven't subscribed, make sure to do sh show, do so. Uh, subscribe and hit that bell icon for the notifications so you always know when the new videos flange up and I think that about covers all the outro stuff and I'll actually remember to do the outro music today I forgot yesterday for some reason so as always have a good one and remember to bring a towel